Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to another awesome episode of On the Throttle with Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Josh Trokey out here bringing you all of the breaking news in motorcycles and power sports every single week out here. Right, Josh, bringing you all these great stories. We had an awesome episode last week where we talked about uh, moto themed gifts for the holiday season, which was super, super fun. Today's show is a show within a show within a show. And I'm going to touch on another awesome gift idea for the motorcyclist in your life. If you've got about $70,000 laying around, we've got an interview with Andre Albert from the AIM Expo folks. We're going to chat a little bit about AIM Expo, which is coming up in February. And then my second story for today, we are going, I'm going to be talking a little bit of motorcycle business news. Josh, what you got going on in your neck of the woods? Boy, that's tough to follow. Um, that being said, <laughs> I'm wondering if KTM is following a trend that they're noticing that a couple of us may like, and is there finally a threat to Aero Stitch? Woo, spicy. Yeah. I love Josh. Josh is bringing the spicy <laughs> stories today. Uh, we're all going to have to wait to hear about that story and all of our awesome stories. We've got an interview, we've got a sneak peek, we've got a trailer. It's going to be a doozy after this word from our sponsor. Well, welcome back. As I mentioned at the top of the program, if you've got a cool 70,000 doll hairs laying around uh, that you're looking to spend, have I got something awesome for you to spend it on. It is the perfect gift to give or gift for yourself. And this is a brand new motorcycle from the folks over at Ducati, a gorgeous machine in partnership with the folks over at Bentley. So let's go ahead and jump on into the story. A limited edition Ducati Diavel for Bentley is being released. Let's go ahead and chat about it. It is a $70,000 Diavel V4 with new Bentley inspired bodywork. As you can see, it is absolutely gorgeous and in the same paint scheme so it can match your Bentley that you've got parked in your garage, right? I know I've got one laying around. Josh, I think has one or two laying around. Yeah, a couple so of surely the perfect gift would be to buy a motorcycle that matches it. Uh, again, this is a 70,000 cool dollars. It is not the very first time Ducati has done this. However, Ducati has also released uh, Lamborghini themed bikes. They've done all sorts of cool, like custom limited edition bikes for other automotive manufacturers. Um, and then that Lamborghini was in 2020. Uh, Bentley is, of course, another VW owned company, along with Lamborghini and Porsche as the group's halo manufacturers. Ducati sits in a similar position, although it's a VW only motorcycle company. So they are all under the same parent umbrella, which makes sense for this is why Ducati is especially eager to be partnering up with some of their brothers and sisters underneath the VW umbrella. Again, this beautiful, beautiful machine is taking its cues from the $2 million Bentley Batour, an ultra limited edition super coupe with a 730 horsepower twin turbo uh, W12 engine coach built in a run of just 18 cars. So they're going to be making this a limited edition bike. Um, and it is identical, basically, though, I'm not going to lie to the $27,000 standard Diavel. It's really just the cosmetics of this is what makes it extra special, but still very beautiful, very cool. I think it's super neat. And heck, why not? Josh, what do you got to say about this very beautiful Ducati? It's beautiful. Um, to me, that is the way to basically drive your wallet down the road, I think. Um, <laughs> it is a great way to say, hey, look, um, look at what I have or look at what one of my friends mm -hmm. has, because there's a lot of us that would ride that all day long, but we sure ain't going to afford it. So for uh, us to borrow that from a friend that uh, sure, um, it's interesting. I mean, they do these one off pieces. There's collector's pieces. They've been around forever. I mean, I remember the old homologation specials with 996 SPs and a pro SPs, and all those others that were, I mean, 25 years ago, they were $30,000 bikes. So I get it. Um, I may not put one in my garage, and I know you said it's a great gift, but I'm sorry, Jackie, I may not put it in your garage either. 
<laughs> Josh, how dare you? Yeah, uh, it's, yeah it no, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's super cool. Ducati is very, very well known for doing these partner, these cool partnerships and co-brands and all sorts of cool stuff like that. And I do enjoy the Diablo. I like the fact that they've changed it up. I like that it's a V4 now. I thought that that exhaust work that I just showed a close yeah. up of just a hot second ago that Ashley threw up there. I think that that is just really tidy and sure. very slick looking. I think this might. I, I love I love this bike for being what it is, which to me is like a very kind of like muscle cruiser. I think it's cool. Anyway, Josh, what you got going on for your first story today? So also European, we're going to talk KTM because there are now some spy shots out there of a what looks like a new KTM 390 adventure. It's the adventure that many of us had hoped had come out because this is what it looks like. So this is the 399 LC 4C liquid cooled four uh, valve compact single cylinder 44.3 horsepower 28.8 foot pounds of torque there is a small increase in torque but not an increase in horsepower now what's interesting about this is this is up in displacement it is due to a longer stroke which as someone that mm. likes the off-roady type bikes we are down for this the peak power comes in at 8500 rpm instead of 9500 rpm we know this because of the new duke 390 that was released and we're pretty sure this is just going to cross right over um there's also speculation that this for some other european models will go into a 250 or 125 cc setup um something i found interesting it's an adventure bike look at that exhaust it's just flat underneath the bike there's nothing hanging off the sides i find that <laughs> Very, very interesting how they were able to do that and not kill ground clearance. So some of the other things that we're able to find with this, it's a steel trellis frame. It's different than what we've seen before. Um, looks like we can't see for sure, but there's probably a speculation of a cast aluminum subframe. WP suspension, 21 uh, inch front, 18 inch rear, both of them with spokes because currently there's 19 inch wheels on it. So we've got much more off-roady worthy tires. Um, new design rally inspired elements. And this is the thing that I'm going to get into here in a minute. It is a Dakar style high front fender is what they're calling it. Well, guess what? It's a dirt bike fender. We like it. Um, <laughs> it is a tall vertical one piece screen with the headlamp. They are also, mm -hmm. um, other mm -hmm. details we're seeing updated brakes, new instrument cluster. Um, obviously the ground clearance is much taller, which means the seat's going to be taller launch likely as a 2025 model, maybe in fall of 2025. Mm. Four. Um, hmm. I am pretty sure that there's going to be a price increase on this. So is everyone else on the internet that's talking about this. There may, it's more than likely that this is still going to be built in India. Now, what I find kind of interesting about this is these are spy shots, but we seem to have a whole heck of a lot of information. So where did these spy shots, quote unquote, <laughs> come from? Because the thing that I noticed is these are spy shots of the bike going one way and then the other way in the exact same spot. So unless someone was camped out in front of that facility all day long, who knows? The thing that I find interesting about this and the timing about this and the things that I wanted to talk about and questions. Um, Cove, we've talked about that a few times, that 450 mm -hmm. rally bike. This is what so many of us want. And I'll get into that in a second. The new Himalayan, did this trigger this? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I, I do think so, but don't think so because the Old 390 would compete with the new Himalayan. New Himalayan, I don't think, is going to compete with something like this. Too, too many differences in the suspension, other things the way it's going to do it. So where does this fit? This is the big question. And what I see with this is when I go out riding and I see that, I mean, at most everyone knows I'm in a DRZ 400. I've got a windscreen on it. When you look at the number of DRZs, when you look at the number of KTM 690s with rally front end kits on them, the $2,000 rally towers on them, when you <laughs> see the number of those, is that what this is for? Because that seeing the number of those tells you that people want this style of bike. We want to ride to the dumb trails that we're going to go ride on and do stupid human tricks on but we need some wind protection on the way. So that I think KTM has realized is what so many people want. There's some speculation on this that it may be a little bit chonky still, but we <laughs> will have to see. I think KTM is smart enough to make this as light as possible. I mean, do you think that they, they see the Kove and are like, oh yeah, we need to get back into this. What are your thoughts, Jackie? Well, I mean, you and I both know that this bike has been a year or two plus in the works, you know, yeah. they're just 
they're too, too large of a company to make that kind of pivot, you know, and like, and follow a trend in the same year as another company. So I think that, I think that the market is just heading this way. I think that small bikes are just kind of a thing right now, because especially as we talk, it feels like every single week about a middleweight category player. I think that they're just starting to pay more attention to some smaller bikes as well. So I think it's just kind of the right bike, the right place, the right time. I am really curious to see about the final price tag on this. I would not put this head to head with the new Himalayan only because the Himalayan, as much as they're really touting that new engine and they're really excited about it. And I believe in it. I believe that it's, it's new and cool and it's going to be an amazing thing for that bike. They still considered a very simple machine. They didn't want to add a ton of like bells and whistles and doodads and things on it, which the KTM would have, would have a little bit more of that. So it's sure. it's kind of apples and oranges. They're not exactly the same Correct. thing. You get what I'm saying? No, so, totally. And it's but, the other thing that you got to look at too is with suspension travel on this. This is going to have, I mean, nine probably inches of suspension travel, like a dirt bike. Whereas the Himalayan, if I remember correctly, is like right around like low low to mid sevens. Um, there is yeah. a difference. Some of us will use all of that and then some, and that extra inch or two of suspension travel means a lot to your spine. <laughs> Every inch matters, Josh. But the one thing I will say is that, uh, you know, you and I, I'm going to give you the unpopular opinion that the reason why these kind of rally themed bikes right now, aka a nice big fat windshield on the front right now and the nice sit upright position, the reason why these are so popular right now is because unpopular opinion. I don't think a lot of these bikes are actually going out and doing much of the dirt. I think people are buying these because they look cool. They like the vibe and they're riding them around town and they're riding them maybe occasionally on like a dirt road or fire road. But I don't think that these are like true dirt weapons. That's just me. Go ahead. Yell at me in the comments. Let me have it. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that you go out and you shred um, on your on your rally style bike every single week like Josh does. So I, we always go back and read the comments. You're more than welcome to say, hey, now, as far as our next story, as I mentioned, this is a super action packed show today. Um, I have got a great interview and by I, I mean, actually Megan, Megan Cusick, who is an editor at large for our parent website, which has all sorts of amazing articles. She absolutely crushes it. There's so many cool things going on over there. It's motorcycleparsportsnews.com. Make sure you go check out the parent website, but she grabbed an interview with Andre Albert, who is a marketing and events director over at AIM Expo, which as you know, is the motorcycle business to business trade show that takes place in February in Las Vegas. It is February 6th, 7th, and 8th. If you are in the motorcycle industry and you have not booked that yet, you need to put this on your calendar immediately and go get yourself a hotel room because this is right around the same time as Super Bowl. So you got to act now. You got to be quick. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump on into this interview. They're going to chat about our Motorcycle Passports News new partnership with the folks over at AIM Expo, as well as a new web series that's coming out in January. Myself um, is, is a co-host of that show, and we got a trailer for it right behind this interview. So grab a snack. You're not going to want to miss any of this, and we'll see you here just in a hot second after the, after the trailer for Two Wheels, Two Ways. Hey, what's up, dealers? Stop wasting your time posting to Facebook. I'm Joe coming at you with today's Pit Stop Pointers. Social media is pay to play, folks. Run highly targeted ads to grow your audience first, then watch your content soar by posting behind the scenes looks into your daily operations or service processes. Transparency builds trust and use hashtags. The right hashtags, the more eyeballs. It's that simple. Intrigue, click the link and unleash the full power of social. Stay tuned for more Pit Stop Pointers clunky DMS software at work and beautiful software in your personal life? Check out Black Pearl at blackpearl.com, a game changer designed for modern dealers. Simplify your operations with Black Pearl. Don't let outdated DMS technology hold your business back. Hey, MPM fam, and welcome back to another episode of On the Throttle. Today, we have Andre Albert, the Director of Marketing and Events for the Motorcycle Industry Council here with us. And he's going to give us a little bit more insight on AIM Expo, which is coming up in just a couple more months. Hey, Andre, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. How are you doing? Ah, doing just fine. All right. So now it's been a couple months since we last checked in with you guys. How is the show floor shaping up? Really well, maybe a little too well, actually. Um, we are officially sold out um, and we've started a waiting exactly. list, but we're really working on some solutions that is going to 
add some additional floor space to the show so that everyone has an equal opportunity um, to come down and get involved. But yeah, as it stands right now, we've got over 17 major OEMs, five major distributors, um, and hundreds of brands on the floor. And if you look at the exhibitor list, you'll see it's a diverse range of, of brands. So yeah, the show floor is shaping up really, really well. That is fantastic to hear. You know, I know like the last few years because of the pandemic and everything, it was, you know, kind of hard getting back into that, but it's really great to hear that the industry is just coming out in force this year. Absolutely. All right. Now, in our last interview with you guys, uh, we talked a bit about the education sessions that AMEXPO and MPN are partnering to put on. But this time around, let's talk a bit about some of the other fun features at the 2024 show. So while the e-bike pavilion wasn't necessarily new last year, the e-bike demo track was. And now you're bringing it back for this year. So what was the response to the demo track last year and what does AIM Expo kind of hope to achieve with these demos? For sure. Yeah, the e-bike demo track was a hit last year. It became like a, a focal point on the show floor where people could go hang out and see what's going on. We had over 15 different brands of e-bikes out there. And the general idea there is to give dealers and media and any other attendees the opportunity to get a hands-on experience while on the show floor. And you can really experience and explore a product when you get to use it. So yeah, we wanted to sort of up the experience, not just look at stuff, but truly get on it and use it and understand the product and feel what it's all about. It's obviously quite a new space. Um, it's been a number of years now, but it's a fairly new space in the power sports industry. So yeah, getting uh, people on the bikes on the show floor, it just kind of gives them a different kind of experience that we think is highly valuable. Absolutely. I know I had a lot of fun tearing up that floor myself last year at the e-bike demo. So uh, there are there were a ton of bikes to try, and I'm sure there will be plenty this year as well. Now, speaking of e-bikes, you've also announced the return of the industry e-bike throwdown after a five-year hiatus. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and where and when we can sign up? Absolutely. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. We originally had this at the 2019 expo in columbus and that was actually a full flat track event and we just bolted on a little industry class to keep it fun um, for some of the industry players but it was such a hit then and people have been asking for it ever since that we decided to have a complete racing event um, that is purely industry so super 73 has come on um, as the title sponsor there so we'll be racing super 73 bikes um, and yeah there's going to be different classes for your dealers for your media for your exhibitors and basically just kind of stoking that competitive fire that the personnel of the power sports industry is so familiar with. And yeah, it's just going to be a fun event. It's going to take place at the industry party powered by turn 14 distribution. That's Tuesday night, February the 6th. Registrations are currently open. You can find the link on our website, amexpousa.com. So there are a limited number of positions available. So jump over to the site, click in through, get your entry in if you hope to be one of our racers that night. Moving off from two wheels, uh, let's move to the four wheel showcase, which is also coming back this year. And I hear it's growing. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, four wheels is obviously, it's a big part of the power sports industry. And a lot of our exhibitors at the show make products for both two and four, or some of them are exclusively four. And it's a massively growing segment in the power sports industry. So yeah, last year we launched uh, the four wheel showcase. It's basically an area where that had all the different four wheel units with a bunch of parts bolted on them and allowed people to just kind of immerse themselves in a, a four wheel centric area. And again, get hands on uh, on the vehicles and check them out and just show that representation within the industry at the show. So yeah, we're going to do it again. Absolutely. Hopefully have more units with more parts and just keep that four wheel representation on the floor. Excellent. All right. Now, speaking of wheels and showcasing, 2024 marks the return of the two-wheel custom showcase after another five-year hiatus. Uh, so what made you guys decide to bring this show offering back? And is this just something extra fun for dealers to look at, or does it also serve kind of an educational purpose as well? I think it's both of those things. Um, and we've obviously had these uh, two-wheel showcases before and custom showcases. And again, part of it is representation. We want to ensure that we represent the entire industry Custom is obviously a huge segment within. So having that back makes absolute sense. It is also educational in that these kinds of showcases allow us to see where the trends are going, 
there's a lot of builders out there that are sort of on the on the street level when it comes to how people are customizing their motorcycles and the, the way that they're doing it so to have that at the show it goes oh, okay cool this is what's happening in this area and the v twin guys might be doing this and it just gives us it puts our fingers on the pulse a little bit to let us know what's going on in the custom area as well as represent the custom and custom v twin on the show floor absolutely all right so finally in addition to the education sessions we at mpn have partnered with you guys at aim expo to produce a new video series called two wheels two ways which is documenting the journey of acquiring two bikes and riding them across the country to las vegas for the aim expo show now when we pitched this idea to you guys you hopped right on board uh, what is the value you feel that dealers and even consumers will get from watching this series? I jumped at the idea because I believe this series will be able to show us the industry in its entirety, which is also what AIM Expo tries to do. We go from the rider through to the dealer, through to the motorcycle, the aftermarket parts, just linking it all together. And once this series is complete, that's essentially what it's going to show, acquiring the bikes, Work, maintenance work on the bikes, adding aftermarket parts, stopping in at the dealer, and showing how each piece of this puzzle is extremely important for the industry as a whole. And again, that's what AIM Expo tries to do. It tries to make sure that we have the entire industry represented at every piece of the puzzle so that they can, each can obviously feel their importance that they play. But this show will allow us to show it in its entirety over the course of the episode. So yeah, it was an absolute no brainer to get involved because it tells the story of power sports out in the field. Thank you so much. And we are looking forward to the show this February. No problem. Thanks for having me and we'll see you in Las Vegas. Hi, I'm Patrick Roberts. I'm a photojournalist and videographer for NPN Magazine. When I was given the opportunity to cover the AIM Expo in Las Vegas, I jumped at the chance. But what better way to explore the best power sports expo in the world than a 2000 mile ride across country on an incredible motorcycle. There's only one problem. I haven't made a ride this long in a couple decades. So I called my friend Jackie Van Ham to help me with the ride. She's a real powerhouse in the world of motorcycling and power sports, and I can't think of a better person to make this journey with. Together, we'll explore motorcycle and power sports culture and go on some incredible adventures. Join us as we ride to the AIM Expo on two wheels, two ways. I saw a lot of people there and that's that's the only thing that had me worried about that there was a shots with a lot of people and i'm like mm, i don't know <laughs> you're like i don't think so i don't think so no all jokes aside thanks uh to andre and megan for a great interview i am super excited to head out to aim expo again if you have not booked your tickets or your hotel if you are in the motorcycling industry if you are a dealer and are considering going please head over to their website and check out some information Get yourself signed up. Come on out. Come hang out with us. It is an awesome, awesome trade show. And we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be there. Patrick Roberts is going to be there, my co-host, as well as director of Two Wheels, Two Ways. We had an epic ride, and it's just going to be such a great time. So that's what's going on. So thank you so much to uh, Megan and Andre for adding to today's program. Now, for my second story for today, a little bit more motorcycle biz NAS, because somebody who is definitely motor part of motorcycling, I don't know, maybe like a royal family, uh, there's a little bit of a story about him. And this is Mr. Zach Parham. Par the name Parham might sound familiar to you because his parents uh, founded JNP Cycles in the Wayback Machine. So he literally was born into the motorcycling industry. Uh, Zach Parham has been named the CEO of the Komodo family of brands. So let's go ahead and jump on into this story. Zach Parham, who is an avid rider and again has been immersed in motorcycling since birth, has been named as the new president and CEO of the Komodo family of brands effective immediately. Komodo is the parent company of Revzilla Cycle Gear, uh, Reaver, JMP Cycles, and the company began um, 
which J.P. Cycles began actually in 1979 by Zach's parents, as I mentioned, uh, John and Jill Parham. He replaces Ken Murphy, who has served as CEO for more than four years, and is now leaving the company to pursue another opportunity. Parham's promotion means that Komodo will now be led by an industry insider, woohoo, whose career progression has included everything from sweeping floors at his parents' store as a teenager to serving as the chief finance, financial officer and chief operating officer at Komodo. Quote, I've been an avid motorcycle enthusiast my entire life, and I'm thrilled to lead the Komodo family of brands and our dedicated team, said John, said Parham. I look forward to working with our longstanding supplier base to bring even more great products and services to our consumer base. I also want to thank Ken Murphy for his leadership and mentorship over the past several years. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up, and just as a side note, I think that the actual first store for J&P Cycles back in Iowa, if I remember correctly, I think I read about that, that they're actually closing that down here pretty soon. Uh, Jill Parham, John Parham unfortunately passed away a handful of years ago. Jill Parham sold off a good amount of the collection that was held um, in that store this past year. Um, and so... I thought that this was interesting because we talk a lot about a lot in the industry, Josh. I think there's a lot of conversation about like CEOs and people who are at the top of the food chain not being actual motorcyclists. And there are people that are coming into this industry from like venture capitalists or different backgrounds or automotive background is really popular to put those people into position running these great big, huge motorcycle companies. And there's a bit of like there's a bit of like a mixed thought about it. It's 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 a it's good because it gives a fresh set of eyeballs, but it's but it's also like kind of bad because they don't know the motorcycle community and they don't know the industry. So I, for one, am on the side of like yes, like somebody who is in motorcycling, somebody who rides, somebody who gets it, somebody who has seen all the different trends come and go. Um, I'm part of team. Like heck yes, I'm excited to see this happen. Josh, what do you think about that? It's interesting you say that because a business is a business is a business is a business and they all have their own idiosyncrasies and stuff like that. You see it a lot in the automotive world with CEOs where they work brought they used to bring people straight up through there to become eventually the CEO of someplace like Ford GM things of that nature. And that worked very well. Then they went outside and you're starting to see them pull more people back internally again because once again Business is business, but there's always idiosyncrasies and small things about it that make them different. The big thing with our industry is our industry is 95% passion based. We all do this and we're in this because we love it. And when someone's in it for a different reason, it shows. And that to me is going to be the big key here is, I, I mean, look, he's about as in it as you can get. Um, so to yeah. have someone like that, that makes a big difference. Yeah, I'm excited uh, to see what happens and what's going on going forward. Uh, Komodo, as I, as I mentioned during the story, owns, is the parent company now of several huge, huge motorcycling businesses. So this is to me really exciting and really, really good news to have Zach Parham uh, up at the top, sitting, sitting in the big chair, as it were. All right, Josh, what's your second story for today? Speaking of businesses that have been around for a while, Aerostitch, we're not talking about them today. We are talking about Revit, which, oh. yes, <laughs> see, Revit just released the Paramount GTX One Piece Adventure Touring Suit. And you're going to see in a second here, some of you already know where I'm headed with this. Um, mm -hmm. This is an unconventional one piece suit design for adventure touring. Now this is adventure touring is what this is set up for. It is fully waterproof, 3L Gore-Tex construction with dry suit technology. So it's got gaskets all around like wrists, neck, stuff like that. Um, full length tie zip, master seal zipper for easy entry and exit. And you can see they had a shot where the zipper goes all the way down one leg. So you stick your foot through one leg, the other leg, basically it zips up around that leg and goes all the mm. way up to the top. So you zip from ankle mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. ankle to neck. Um, yep. There is a, a number of ventilation pieces to this. So that is a big added bonus with this. Um, it eliminates that jacket and pants gap that most of us get water in when we're mm -hmm. riding in the rain that where you're like, there's nothing worse than a wet butt. Um, it is also suspended from the shoulders so that way you've got that unrestricted hip movement because we all know when you're out there getting jiggy with it you need to be able to <laughs> move around it has ce2 armor on the back shoulders elbow 
toes and knees. Um, there's they what they're calling almost imperceptible CE level one C smart hip armor. Um, they say great range of motion for it. There's stretch panels and fit adjustability. You can see the straps there that go around the Look. waist area if you want to cinch that up. Mm -hmm. um, it is available in standard short and long sizes. Um, they have any color you would like as long as it is this dark blue option. Um, this goes for the MSRP is $14.99.99, which is kind of interesting. Seems pricey, but it's not. So here's what I say with this. This is going after some of Aerostitch's lunch money in a oh. way. The way it's not going after Aerostitch's lunch money lunch money is the fact that this they have like i said in standard short and long sizes plus there's the regular small medium large extra large double extra large whatever you need however many x's you need there the difference is when you order an arrow stitch it is 100 custom fit for you if you're a little bit bigger in the stomach and a little bit narrower in the shoulders they do that um this isn't so there's no, this is quite a bit less expensive than an arrow stitch, but it's not going to have that custom fit. Now they're making up for that with some of those side pieces. You can see some around the calves, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I think it is a great budget option. I see it. I, I, I'm sure that they are going to sell an absolute boat ton of these because look, <laughs> a one piece suit is so nice when the weather turns nasty because you don't have that, like I said, you're not getting water down mm -hmm. your butt. Um, there's not gonna be that back gap back there where you get that little bit of a breeze. It doesn't matter how many layers I wear. It doesn't matter how I tuck them in. I always end up with some wind on the small of my back. This is going to eliminate <laughs> all of that to me. Plus, I mean, with that with that zip entry like that, Jackie, I could see. I mean, I could see you ordering one of these, and this could. I mean, if you put a cape on this, you don't even need to go to into a phone booth to put this on. You just step into that one leg, zip up the other leg, and you are suddenly yeah. the rain riding superhero. Yeah, absolutely. So the thing about these one piece suits, Josh, and I am absolutely a jumpsuit junkie. I do refer to myself as Jackie jumpsuit. <laughs> yes, you uh, are. Jumpsuit Jackie. Uh, that is that is this is totally my bag. I love all this. Uh, so yeah, this is I, I'm, I am gobsmacked that is taken this long for somebody Agreed. to make a direct uh, com competitor to Arrow Stitch. Arrow Stitch is absolutely the king in adventure land. Yes. Everybody, if you say that name to any BMW GS nerd, they know immediately what you're talking about. They probably own one um, for, and they've had for the last 20 years. Cause they can and get live it and fixed. Die in it. So yeah, yeah. I've got several friends that own these and they're just, I mean, I, I love it. I'm absolutely here for it. They've got storage. They are absolutely amazing. I love this option, Josh. 1400 bucks. Yeah. Yes. It, yes. It's a lot of money. Yes. I'm not, not trying to pretend that it isn't, but, but versus when you're dry, the custom it, version, it's, it's yeah, just, versus, it's not that expensive at all. <laughs> yeah, It's worth every penny when you're riding through some sort of crazy, like sideways rainstorm. Uh, Correct. Uh, no, I am here for it. This is a yes for me. I do love the adjustability on it. I do get that it's not a custom piece, but man, Man, it's pretty darn close and Revit yeah. does such a bang up job with creating they really do. lovely like fitted and customizable gear uh this is a yes for me and I even love that blue and I'm gonna absolutely get online and keep an eye out for these guys and see if I can start shopping. find a coupon <laughs> <laughs> I can see it yeah, I love this. So, yeah, so we opened today's show and closed today's show with some additional uh, moto-themed gifts for me or for Josh or for somebody somebody in your life who sure. maybe owns a Bentley or, or aspires to own a Bentley. Wear the uh, anyway, Revit suit that was Bentley. today's show. Yeah, or that. Or, you know, that. Whatever you got to do out there. Uh, so today's show awesome action-packed huge thanks again to megan and andre for the great interview sandwich in the middle of today's delicious program um we also had that trailer for the new series two wheels two ways coming your way in january that was myself and my director and co-host patrick roberts out there did a 2000 mile journey stay tuned for it. hit notifications on all that good stuff because you are not going to want to miss it have a great day everybody and we will see you next week <laughs>